So recently we put out a video where we tested different types of waterfowl hunting ammunition through one gun to see how they pattern, ballistic performance, all that type of stuff. I've reviewed every one of these guns already, but one thing I don't talk about in the reviews is pattern performance. Does it really matter? Do you see a significant difference from one gun to the next on how it patterns down range? Is that something you should consider when you purchase your next waterfowl gun? We're gonna deep dive into that, look at all these guns, how they perform down range, because some of these manufacturers claim that they have all this technology and it makes their gun superior in performance. We're gonna see if that's true. Are you ready? Let's go! So excited for this video today because I'm genuinely curious if we see a significant difference. We got a wide range of guns. The lineup goes from the Browning A5 to the Beretta A400 Extreme Plus, Mossberg 940 Pro, Browning Maxxis 2, Benelli Super Black Eagle 3, Winchester SX4, Franke Affinity 3, the Beretta A300 Ultima, Weatherby Element, the Stoger M3500. So we got a wide range of guns here, all 12 gauge. We're gonna shoot the same exact choke through every one of these guns, which is the Carlson's Delta series choke. One thing to point out though, although we're gonna shoot this Carlson's Delta series mid-range in every gun, every barrel has a little bit different bore diameter. And the chokes, because the guns have different diameter, are a little bit different. For example, this Browning and Vector Plus is a 0.720, where if we look at, say, the Beretta Benelli choke, it's a 0.705. So there's no perfect way to get an exact same choke constriction for these different guns. These are all mid-range, they're all kind of that mod type choke, just made specifically for the different manufacturers. Now, one interesting thing is some of these manufacturers tote all sorts of marketing saying that their barrels are gonna perform better than others. For example, you have the Benelli Super Black Eagle 3. They claim the cryo treatment, freezing these barrels after they've been hammer forged at negative 300 degrees, molecularly changes the barrel and makes it smoother and gives you less resistance and helps you pattern better. Is that true? We'll find out. The Beretta A400 Extreme Plus has a stelium barrel. Beretta brags about the stelium barrel. It's got a lengthened forcing cone, which helps reduce the drastic change inside the barrel, giving you less pellet deformation, a smoother transition, less recoil, all these things. They claim they have the best barrel in the industry in pattern performance. Browning and Winchester have the 742 backbore technology. They backbore their barrels, giving you a little bit longer forcing cone. But really, before we get all technical and talk all this nonsense, does it matter? Put it down in the comments below which one of these guns you believe will perform best on paper at 40 yards. We're gonna see how many pellets are within a 30 inch circle, how many landed within that 30 inch circle, how many landed in the duck, and then we're also gonna look at point of aim versus point of impact. Now I know with some of these guns, I've heard complaints out there that it shoots high left. I'm not gonna say any names. We're shooting the Federal Speed Shock. Obviously 12 gauge, three inch shell, traveling at 1450 out of the muzzle an ounce and a quarter of shot, and it's two shot. We're gonna stay consistent with this ammo. We used this ammo in a patterning test in a recent video, and it performed actually really well out of the A5, and it's the cheapest waterfowl ammo, and probably one of the most common. Uh, we could shoot bismuth and TSS or Black Cloud, all those ones, but that gets really expensive, and I would say your average person is probably shooting this type of steel. I got a lot of shooting to do, so let's get to it. Check this out might be kind of hard to see, but I actually have my target on this tablet. I have a long shot target camera down range, and so I can shoot my target, and I'm gonna try this blink feature, where I've taken a picture of the target, and then I'm gonna take a picture after I shoot, and it will blink back and forth, so you can clearly see where the pellets hit. So I'm gonna try that out, I'm gonna be using this throughout the video, playing with it a little bit. It's a cool feature, kind of primarily made for rifle shooting down range. I think it can go out to two miles, this one. So you can have that camera down there, get instant feedback, mark your shot, super cool. All right, here's the deal, guys. First up is the Super Black Eagle 3. I'm gonna shoot just one shot. If it puts out a great pattern, we're happy with it. We'll roll with it. If it patterns terribly, we'll shoot another one, just to be fair. I don't wanna be the one making mistakes here. I'm using this lead sled to minimize any human error. Which gun is gonna pattern the best? Put it down below. We'll see what happens. 
Well, we got a dead duck, ladies and gentlemen. So this is actually really, really cool. What I've done is I've selected the outer edges of the pattern on this app, and it actually tells me where my point of impact was, where the center of that pattern is. So it looks like I'm high about 1.78 inches, and I'm to the left about 0.9 inches. So a lot of people have brought up that their Super Black Eagle 3 pattern's high and left. I am seeing that slightly, although let's go down range. We're gonna count pellets and record the data. We ended up with 14 in the duck, one in the head, nine body, four in the wings. Within this 30 inch circle here that you see, we had 107 pellets. Out of 156 pellets, we got about 69% within this 30 inch circle. I kind of outlined the pattern here so you can see it. We did shoot a little high, several pellets up here, slightly left. Point of aim was about right there. Point of impact was right in this vicinity. So a little high, a little left, actually not terrible. Let's move on to the next one. Next up, we have the Beretta A400 Extreme Plus. So this is rather interesting. We actually ended up with 15 in the duck, two in the head, seven body, six in the wings. Had pretty good uh, success hitting the duck. There was 23 in this target, 58 in the circle outside the target. Total of 96 though, out of 156. So that's 62% are within the circle. As far as point of aim and point of impact, we were low about four inches and maybe just slightly right. So point of aim was here. Point of impact was about here. We had more pellets on the perimeter of the circle and we have several outliers out here, but let's go shoot some more. Frocky Affinity 3 is up next. I have grown to love this gun, so I hope we get good results. We only had nine in the duck. Did get two in the head, one in the body, six in the wings. So we had less pellets in the duck. We had 33 in this target overall. 71 in the circle, a total of 113 out of the 156 within the 30 inch circle, given a 72%. Now you can see the point of impact is high about four inches, left about an inch. We had a very high concentration of pellets right here, and we have some major holes at the bottom side of our pattern. So I kind of drew the edges of our pattern with a few flyers out there, not a lot, but really if I was gonna draw it, our concentration of pellets is something like this. So it shot a fairly tight pattern. It's just that we're high, I would say even more than four, four inches high. Nice dense pattern, 72% still in there. If you were using this gun and knew it shot high, you just got to adjust your sight picture a little bit. But that's the highest percentage yet, but we still got a lot more to shoot. So next up, we have the Stoger M3500. Let me grab my fancy charging handle here, also known as the screwdriver. Bonus points, if you can name the video where the charging handle and the bolt release broke. Put that in the comments. I want to know who's been watching. All right, folks, here's the Stoger M3500. We ended up with zero in the head, eight in the body, four in the wings. So we only got 12 in the duck, but we had 36 on this target and 59 in the greater circle, total of 107. Comes out to 69%, which is a, an exact match to the Super Black Eagle 3. Had 107 pellets, 69%, 68 and a half plus. So we rounded up 69 in case you double check our math. There's almost no pellets below the duck. We have a lot above the duck um, with some pretty major gaps in our pattern. Pretty big gap here, pretty big gap here, pretty big gap there. Um, a lot of pellets here. So if I was shooting at this duck, you really have to shoot these, the Franke, the Stoger, and the Benelli a little bit different. Instead of putting your eye right here, or your bead right there, you might actually want to put it down below the duck. Several flyers to point out, several flyers way outside. We got more guns to shoot before we give any conclusions to this pattern here. On to the Winchester SX4. Here we go. 
So this is the Winchester SX4. This is attempt number two. The first pattern was not good at all. We wanted to shoot it again, see if we got a similar result. We didn't. Um, so we're gonna take that into consideration. We get to the end of this video. This is pattern number two. Pattern number two actually turned out decent. Ended up with 16 in the duck. That's really good. 45 in the target, 51 in the circle. So a total of 112 total out of 156. That's 72% which lines up well with the Affinity 3. Now, one thing I observe about this pattern is it seems to be the most true so far, as far as up and down, left to right, but it also spreads quite a bit. Several of the other patterns had a tighter concentration, and it seems like this one is a little bit more spread out. You can see on the far right and left edges, uh, up on the top, and we do have significant holes in this. Now there's only 156 BBs. That's one of the sacrifices you have when you have a larger shot size, like a number two. You're gonna have less BBs, but you're carrying more energy. I mean, if a duck were in some of these spots, you might only have gotten a few pellets on it. it might be enough to down it, but the more the merrier. Uh, this duck is definitely dropping with one in the head, all those in the wing, a few in the body. That duck's going down. If it would have been kind of anywhere in this vicinity, it's pretty good, but yeah, those gaps are not ideal. And uh, we'll keep shooting and see if this is another gun we bring to the finals or not. Now up to the Browning Maxis II. Okay, so I see some similarities here between the SX4 and, and the Maxis II. They're both shooting similar barrel. It's the 742 backbore barrels. Um, same choke tube in Vector Plus, same exact choke tube. And what I'm seeing here is we had 19 pellets in the duck. That's the most so far, which is pretty encouraging. But then we, when we look at the target and the circle overall, only 102 pellets out of 156. So that's 65%. So that's towards the bottom of the results that we've seen as far as pellets on target. But as you can see, we shot quite a bit left. Several pellets left, some high. So I think our point of impact was actually high left probably two, three inches high, two, three inches left. And we're seeing these gaps again in the pattern. So it's spreading out a little bit further, but we're seeing inconsistencies in the gaps. I don't really love that, but I love to see, I got 19 in the duck at 40 yards and uh, 26 in the target. So a lot of pellets in the vicinity of where my aim was, but if I was off a little bit, starting to see some big gaps, let's keep shooting. Okay, A5 up next. So we ended up with 10 in the duck, which isn't terrible, but only 87 in our 30 inch circle. So that's 56% of the pellets landed in this 30 inch circle. When I look at this pattern, what stands out is it's kind of wider, just like a lot of the Winchester Browning guns, but there's a lot of outliers in this pattern. You can see there's one, three out there, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's getting really outside of the majority of the pellets. So I think we're losing flyers off the side. Um, obviously some fell outside of the 30 inch circle. If you were to redraw the circle for point of impact, it would look a little bit better, but yeah, still some concerning gaps uh, in there that I don't love. Very interesting. Let's keep shooting. Here we go with the Weatherby element. This gun has actually really surprised me in the reviews. I didn't think I'd like it nearly as much as I did. Great gun for the money, but how does it pattern? So this is one of the better looking patterns out of the Weatherby Element. Only 10 in the duck, which isn't the highest number. But when you look at pellets in the 30 inch circle total, it's 110, which is 71%. A few gaps that I can see here, but one of the more consistent patterns that I've seen. Really impressed with how this shot. But we still got more guns to shoot. Now the 940 Pro, Really impressed me when I shot it with Jerry Michalik, did a review on it with him. This shoots the same choke tube as the Weatherby Element. See if we get similar results. I'm impressed. 18 pellets in the duck. A total of 126 in the circle. Out of 156 pellets, that means only 30 of them are not within this 30 inch circle. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them are just right here, right outside. Very impressive pattern. But when I look at these holes, they're on the perimeter and I'm seeing pockets, high concentration of pellets in the center. So I'm really liking that. If you're accurate, 
you're gonna have a lot of pellets towards your target. If you get on the fringes, it gets pretty thin, right? But this is our best one so far, 81%. We still have one good to go. Last, and certainly not least, well, I don't know that yet, we gotta shoot it, maybe least, Beretta A300 Ultima. Really enjoyed this gun in the review, other than me and a lot of folks had trigger issues. Hopefully Beretta's got that resolved. Let's see how it patterns. So I'm a little bit torn about this one. A lot of pellets in the duck, 18, 121 overall in the circle. That's 78%, that's really good. But look at this hole right here, hole right here, hole right here, all on this top to the left side. Now this did shoot a little bit right. If we can see, we got eight, nine, 10 pellets out here. Um, and it shot maybe a little bit low. It shot a pretty tight pattern. So for a little bit right, a little bit low, I think we're, our point of impact was here, point of aim was there. Now, if we just draw a circle, I'm gonna try to do this on the fly. Like there, it shot a fairly tight pattern. But yeah, I'm a little concerned with these big gaps on the top. Everything down here, really good concentration. So 78 overall, that's our number two. I don't like the consistency of it. Let's figure out which ones are moving to the finals. So I'm seeing some emerging patterns coming about. The Super Black Eagle 3, the Breda A400, the Maxxis 2, the A5. Those are some of the highest dollar guns that also have the most marketing material about the performance of their barrels. Yet, they're not in the top performers. Super fascinating. But what I'm gonna do, so we erase any doubt, I'm gonna reshoot the SB3, the A400, and I'll shoot the A5. The Brownings, the two Brownings and the Winchester all have the same backboard barrels. They should be fairly consistent. The A5 did the worst, 56% in 30 inch circle. So I'm gonna reshoot that one because I know it can do better. And you're gonna see some inconsistency in patterns. But what I'm looking at is the grand scheme of things, do we see major differences in the guns? I have a lot more conclusions, but I need a little bit more information. It will take just a second for you. It's gonna take me quite a while. It's a lot of work out here, but here we go. Super Black Eagle 3 is up next. Please pause for a focus and energy break. If you're wasting money on bangs, on, on uh, what's the other stuff, Jordan? Monster. Monsters, all that garbage. Check out Mountain Ops Ignite is the name of the drink. I have links down in the description. Awesome stuff without the garbage. Fraction of the price, mix it at home. So good. Let's go. <laughs> so we didn't get better. We got worse. We went from 69% in the 30 inch circle to 56%. In the first uh, time we shot the SBE3, we did shoot about five inches high. Again, I think we're about five inches high at least and we have very high concentration of pellets like there, like there. There's some different high concentration with some pretty big gaps. And the pattern is, I mean, goes from out here to all the way over there, pretty wide up top, more narrow in the bottom. We're only gonna take the best. That, that was not its best. We're not gonna use this one for comparison's sake, but it is interesting to see that, I mean, our worst, gun performing guns so far have been 56 percent and this is right down there with that so with this load not seeing any better performance out of the higher dollar gun we only had six pellets in the duck what i mean what one in the body are you serious one pellet in the body several in the wings that's probably a wounded duck very frustrating um let's see if the a400 extreme plus does any different any better any worse what was it? A400 take two. Oh yeah. I have a feeling this one's better. I just feel it. Tremendously better. I think I may know what have happened on the first one. On that lead sled, after shooting the Super Black Eagle 3, I have to lower it quite a bit to get the A400 on center. And if the lead sled doesn't settle in, it will actually drop. And I think it may be dropped when I shoot that because the A400 was the only gun that shot quite a bit low and now we shot a second time it still shot a little bit right maybe half inch to an inch right but it's not low up and down it's pretty consistent we're seeing some gaps right here that's a little concerning kind of some gaps right back here 
but look at the concentration of pellets on that duck. We had 35 in the duck, 33 on the target. That's more than any other combination that we've shot. 59 in the circles, so we had 127 total in the 30 inch circle, 81%. That's among the top. This is more of what I expected to see out of the A400 Extreme Plus, and that's a very encouraging pattern overall. Take two on the A5. Actually shot fewer pellets in the duck. As you can see, there's only seven. One in the head, two in the body, and four in the wings, if we do basic math. Um, would that bring that duck down? Now nah, that headshot's probably gonna do some damage. But not a lot in the duck, less in the duck, but check this out, overall, there was more pellets. We have 110 pellets in the 30 inch circle this time versus last time we had 87, right? And so we shot 71%. So that's a vast improvement. Um, wish I had a few more in the duck. There are a few gaps in the pattern. And just like the first time we shot it, a little bit high, a little bit left. Our point of impact was somewhere close to this. Um, you can see we have a high concentration of pellets right here, and then it kind of drops off at the bottom side of the target. We got quite a few pellets on the left edge. So high left, I've shot the A5 several times with many different loads. That's kind of what I experienced. A little high, several inches left. So, very interesting. Now what does all this mean? So what are the best and worst patterning semi-auto shotguns. I'll break all that down in just a minute, but first let me say results may vary. This was just one test with one kind of ammunition, one kind of choke tube. You change gun, choke tube, or ammunition, you may get different results. All the more reason for you to get out and pattern your own shotgun with the choke and ammo that you plan to use. Shoot three to five patterns and really just dive in and see what's going on. The results of this test were revealing to me. One thing that really stood out is that the high dollar shotguns don't necessarily perform better than the lower dollar shotguns in this particular test with this choke tube and this ammunition. That's very surprising to me because some of these high dollar shotguns, they put a lot of fancy lingo in their marketing materials leading you to believe that they're superior in their performance and patterns. But that doesn't necessarily mean they have a better product. Now, of course, patterning is only one of the elements that we're looking at with shotguns. As you know from when I do my reviews, I'm looking at ergonomics and recoil and reliability and weight and triggers and all these different things. But of course, we don't wanna forget patterning. Out of all of the guns that we shot today, here are the three that really stood out to me. Now, before I break them down, let me just remind you of what we were looking at today. One, we were looking at how many pellets fell within that duck target, in the rectangle and within the duck. I really wanted to see if I was shooting at a duck and I was spot on with everything, how many would I actually put in the duck? But that's only one factor. We can't take that as the end all be all because guess what? Most of the time you're not gonna have a 100% accurate shot. So I was also looking at how many pellets fell within a 30 inch circle. We want good pellet distribution. That was another thing. If the pattern had just high concentrations and patches, that's a negative. I wanna see a good even pellet distribution. So if I'm not 100% spot on in my shot, I have a good even pattern distribution, gives me a little margin of error. One of the other things I looked at is point of aim versus point of impact. Where I was aiming versus where the center of the point of impact was. Several of these guns shot several inches high, five to seven inches on some of them, that's not necessarily a terrible thing. If I'm looking at the duck's head, up on it, I want the center of mass of my pattern to hit where I'm looking. I don't wanna float the duck. I don't wanna be looking below the duck with my focus to shoot something above my sight picture from my shotgun. Personal preference, you might have a different one, put it in the comments, and as I break it down and give you my top three best, and then also the biggest disappointments or the worst, put in the comments if you agree, disagree, I know it's gonna create some controversy, but I love it, put it in the comments. First gun on my list, this gun surprised me. It is the Mossberg 940 Pro. As I said earlier, I used to rip on Mossberg, just some things I didn't like about their guns, but this one is definitely growing on me, and I was really impressed with how well it shot. It had the highest percentage, tied for the highest percentage, with pellets in the 30 inch circle, 
at 81%. It shot a true point of aim, point of impact, had very good palette distribution. I was really impressed with the 940 Pro, especially considering price point. This gun has MSRP in this Blackfield model, less than $1,000, so that was awesome to see. The next gun that stood out to me was the Beretta A400 Extreme Plus. Now this is one of those guns that has a lot of marketing material about their barrel, their stelium barrel, their length and forcing cones, everything that goes into this gun to make it superior in pattern performance and shooting, and it lived up to it. Now I did have to shoot it a second time, the first time was due to my air not operating the lead sled correctly. It dropped when I shot. So we shot it a second time. It had the highest pellet percentage in the 30 inch circle, tied with the Mossberg 940 Pro with 81%. Had good pellet distribution, shot a true point of aim, point of impact. This gun has been growing on me every time I shoot it. There's something I like more and more about the Beretta A400 Extreme Plus. But keep in mind, this gun is pushing up in that $1,600 to $1,800 range. The Mossberg 940 Pro is under $1,000. Third gun on my list is the Weatherby Element. This gun is the only inertia gun that made the top three. What really stood out to me about this gun was its point of aim and its pellet distribution. Really nice uniform pattern. Didn't have as big a gaps as some of the guns. Now, it didn't shoot the highest percentage. There were a few guns that shot a higher percentage in the 30 inch circle. This shot 71%. I believe I had some guns that shot 72%. So it was right in the mix. Some of the other guns that shot a higher pellet percentage were like the Franke Affinity 3, the Winchester SX4. But when it came to pellet distribution, point of aim, point of impact, this gun seemed to stand out versus other guns. Very close race. But again, we're talking about a value budget gun, a gun that's less than $1,000 for an inertia gun. Super impressed with the Weatherby Element. It's another one of those guns that every time I shoot it, it surprises me with how well it performs, especially considering the price. Now on to my biggest disappointments. I'm gonna ruffle some feathers with this. I know it, but hey, like I said, this was only one test. This isn't tried or true gospel, end all be all but do take this into consideration. My biggest disappointment was probably the Benelli Super Black Eagle 3. This gun is pushing $1,800 in that price point. They talk about their cryo treatment, their barrel. This is supposed to be the pinnacle of waterfowl shotguns, and I just expected more out of it. It shot the lowest percentage in the 30 inch circle. It was shooting about five inches high, a little bit left. I shot it twice, hoping that I would get a better pattern than the first time. The second time I shot it, it only got worse. Uh, so very inconsistent and not a great pellet distribution. I don't like that it shoots high. It's not uncommon in some of these Benelli, Franke, Stoger guns. You can get used to that, but kind of disappointed for $1,800 how this gun performed. Next up on the disappointment list is the Brownings, both the Maxxis 2 and the A5. Their patterns had a lot of gaps, very inconsistent. Um, point of aim, point of impact was a little higher than I'd like to see. It didn't shoot quite as true as the SX4 did, um, which is funny because when you look at the barrels of these guns, they're, they're very similar. They're all the backbore, 742 backbore. They're all shooting the Invector choke tubes. So you'd expect similar results, but across the Winchester and the Brownings, I did see just a lot of gaps in the patterns. Um, very low pellet percentage, especially again, we're pushing $1,800 on this Wicked Wing Edition. The A5, same thing. Um, I shot a bunch of patterns with this gun in another video. Every pattern was high left. Now, you could get another A5, shoot it, and you might have a little bit different experience. They're not all necessarily gonna shoot high left. Keep that in mind with all these guns. You go get a, the same gun, the same model, and you might get a little bit different performance. Again, the reason we go out and pattern shotguns to know what they're doing. So Brownings on my disappointment list. I love these guns. I mean, it's true with a lot of these guns. They all have their benefits. They all have their pros. There's things to love about all of these guns, but we're just looking at patterns right now. Last and certainly least is the Stoger M3500. Now, I didn't like the pattern from this gun. 
Plus it shot about seven inches high. That is just way too far from my point of aim. I would have a lot of trouble shooting this gun. On top of that, I have a bias towards this gun because I did break a lot of pieces uh, very easily in some other tests. Um, just not my favorite gun, but I know a lot of you love it, so I'm not gonna hold it against you. Just don't hold it against me that I am not in love with this gun. I think it serves a purpose and it can work well in the field. But out of this patterning performance test, probably one of my least favorites. But at least this gun is right around that $1,000 mark. It's not $1,800 like some of these guns. So do you get what you pay for? Not necessarily. In some circumstances, yes. The features, the ergonomics, the quality of the gun, you get what you pay for. But pattern performance, which is kind of important when you think about it, you're actually talking about your downrange performance. Not how comfortable the gun is, not how light the trigger is, but your downrange performance. You don't always get more for the money. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I appreciate your comments down below. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, whether you're in the field or in life, you're only gonna hit those shots you're laser focused on. So live target focused. See ya.